Introduction. Introduction. This document sets out the recommended concepts and principles for business processes across the build environment sector in support of the management and production of information during the life cycle of build assets, referred to as information management, when using building information modeling, BIM. This document sets out the recommended concepts and principles for business processes across the build environment sector in support of the management and production of information during the life cycle of build assets, referred to as information management. When using Building Information Modeling, BIM, this document sets out the recommended concepts and principles for business processes across the build environment sector in support of the management and production of information during the life cycle of build assets, referred to as information management. When using Building Information Modeling, BIM, these processes can deliver beneficial business outcomes to asset owners, operators, clients, their supply chains and those involved in project funding including increase of opportunity, reduction of risk and reduction of cost through the production and use of asset and project information models. These processes can deliver beneficial business outcomes to asset owners, operators, clients, their supply chains and those involved in project funding including increase of opportunity, reduction of risk and reduction of cost through the production and use of asset and project information models. These processes can deliver beneficial business outcomes to asset owners, operators, clients, their supply chains and those involved in project funding including increase of opportunity, reduction of risk and reduction of cost through the production and use of asset and project information models. In this document, the verbal form, should, is used to indicate a recommendation. In this document, the verbal form, should, is used to indicate a recommendation. In this document, the verbal form, should, is used to indicate a recommendation. This document is primarily intended for use by. This document is primarily intended for use by. This document is primarily intended for use by. Those involved in the procurement, design, construction and or commissioning of build assets, and those involved in the procurement, design, construction and or commissioning of build assets, and those involved in the procurement, design, construction and or commissioning of build assets, and those involved in delivering asset management activities, including operations and maintenance. Those involved in delivering asset management activities, including operations and maintenance. Those involved in delivering asset management activities, including operations and maintenance. This document is applicable to build assets and construction projects of all sizes and all levels of complexity. This document is applicable to build assets and construction construction projects of all sizes and all levels of complexity. This document is applicable to build assets and construction projects of all sizes and all levels of complexity. This includes large estates, infrastructure networks, individual buildings and pieces of infrastructure and the projects or sets of projects that deliver them. This includes large estates, infrastructure networks, individual buildings and pieces of infrastructure and the projects or sets of projects that deliver them. This includes large estates, infrastructure networks, individual buildings and pieces of infrastructure and the projects or sets of projects that deliver them. However, the concepts and principles included in this document should be applied in a way that is proportionate and appropriate to the scale and complexity of the asset or project. However, the concepts and principles included in this document should be applied in a way that is proportionate and appropriate to the scale and complexity of the asset or project. However, the concepts and principles included in this document should be applied in a way that is proportionate and appropriate 
appropriate to the scale and complexity of the asset or project. This is particularly the case where small and medium-sized enterprises are mainly appointed for asset management or project delivery. This is particularly the case where small and medium-sized enterprises are mainly appointed for asset management or project delivery. This is particularly the case where small and medium-sized enterprises are mainly appointed for asset management or project delivery. It is also important that procurement and mobilization of asset or project appointed parties should be integrated as far as possible with existing processes for technical procurement and mobilization. It is also important that procurement and mobilization of asset or project appointed parties should be integrated as far as possible with existing processes for technical procurement and mobilization. It is also important that procurement and mobilization of asset or project appointed parties should be integrated as far as possible with existing processes for technical procurement and mobilization. The concepts and principles contained in this document are aimed at all those involved in the asset life cycle. The concepts and principles contained in this document are aimed at all those involved in the asset life cycle. The concepts and principles contained in this document are aimed at all those involved in the asset life cycle. This includes, but is not limited to, the asset owner, operator, the client, the asset manager, the design team, the construction team, an equipment manufacturer, a technical specialist, a regulatory authority, an investor, an insurer and an end user. This includes, but is not limited to, the asset owner, operator, the client, the asset manager, the design team, the construction team, an equipment manufacturer, a technical specialist a regulatory authority, an investor, an insurer and an end user. This includes, but is not limited to, the asset owner, operator, the client, the asset manager, the design team, the construction team, an equipment manufacturer, a technical specialist, a regulatory authority, an investor, an insurer and an end user. The specific requirements for information management during the delivery of built assets are provided in ISO 196502. The specific requirements for information management during the delivery of built assets are provided in ISO 196502. The specific requirements for information management during the delivery of built assets are provided in ISO 196502. These are based on the concepts and principles within this document, but on its own this document includes no obligation to apply ISO 19650-2 or any other part of the ISO 19650 series to be published. These are based on the concepts and principles within this document. But on its own this document includes no obligation to apply ISO 19650-2 or any other part of the ISO 19650 series to be published. These are based on the concepts and principles within this document. But on its own this document includes no obligation to apply ISO 19650-2 or any other part of the ISO 19650 series to be published. There are many different ways that asset owners, operators or clients can best meet their particular requirements or respond to their national context. There are many different ways that asset owners, operators or clients can best meet their particular requirements or respond to their national context. There are many different ways that asset owners, operators or clients can best meet their particular requirements or respond to their national context. This includes procurement routes and appointment arrangements. This includes procurement routes and appointment arrangements. This includes procurement routes and appointment arrangements. The concepts and principles for information management described in this document should be adopted and applied in accordance with the specific circumstances and requirements 
requirements of the asset management or project delivery activities. The concepts and principles for information management described in this document should be adopted and applied in accordance with the specific circumstances and requirements of the asset management or project delivery activities. The concepts and principles for information management described in this document should be adopted and applied in accordance with the specific circumstances and requirements of the asset management or project delivery activities. The information requirements should specify or guide how this will be achieved and the details should be agreed in time for the requirements to be delivered efficiently and effectively. The information requirements should specify or guide how this will be achieved and the details should be agreed in time for the requirements to be delivered efficiently and effectively. The information requirements should specify or guide how this will be achieved and the details should be agreed in time for the requirements to be delivered efficiently and effectively. Collaboration between the participants involved in construction projects and in asset management is pivotal to the efficient delivery and operation of assets. Collaboration between the participants involved in construction projects and in asset management is pivotal to the efficient delivery and operation of assets. Collaboration between the participants involved in construction projects and in asset management is pivotal to the efficient delivery and operation of of assets. Organizations are increasingly working in new collaborative environments to achieve higher levels of quality and greater reuse of existing knowledge and experience. Organizations are increasingly working in new collaborative environments to achieve higher levels of quality and greater reuse of existing knowledge and experience. Organizations are increasingly working in new collaborative environments to achieve higher levels of quality and greater reuse of existing knowledge and experience. A significant outcome of these collaborative environments is the potential to communicate, reuse and share information efficiently, and to reduce the risk of loss, contradiction or misinterpretation. A significant outcome of these collaborative environments is the potential to communicate, reuse and share information efficiently, and to reduce the risk of loss, contradiction or misinterpretation. A significant outcome of these collaborative environments is the potential to communicate, reuse and share information efficiently, and to reduce the risk of loss, contradiction or misinterpretation. True collaborative working requires mutual understanding and trust and a deeper level of standardized process than has typically been experienced. If the information is to be produced and made available in a consistent timely manner, true collaborative working requires mutual understanding and trust and a deeper level of standardized process than has typically been experienced. If the information is to be produced and made available in a consistent and timely manner. True collaborative working requires mutual understanding and trust and a deeper level of standardized process than has typically been experienced. If the information is to be produced and made available in a consistent timely manner, information requirements need to pass along supply chains to the point where information can be most efficiently produced and information needs to be collated as it is passed back. Information requirements need to pass along supply chains to the point where information can be most efficiently produced, and information needs to be collated as it is passed back. Information requirements need to pass along supply chains to the point where information can be most efficiently produced and information needs to be collated as it is passed back. At present, considerable resources are spent on making corrections to unstructured information or incorrect management of information by untrained personnel. On solving problems arising from incoordinated efforts of delivery teams, and on solving problems related to information reuse and reproduction, at present, considerable resources are spent on making corrections to unstructured information or incorrect management of information by untrained personnel. 
on solving problems arising from incoordinated efforts of delivery teams, and on solving problems related to information reuse and reproduction. At present, considerable resources are spent on making corrections to unstructured information or incorrect management of information by untrained personnel. On solving problems arising from incoordinated efforts of delivery teams, and on solving problems related to information reuse and reproduction, these delays can be reduced if the concepts and principles within this document are adopted. These delays can be reduced if the concepts and principles within this document are adopted. These delays can be reduced if the concepts and principles within this document are adopted. To improve future editions of the ISO 19650 series, national asset owners, public clients and authorities are recommended to gather information and experiences about its implementation and use. To improve future editions of the ISO 19650 series, national asset owners, Public clients and authorities are recommended to gather information and experiences about its implementation and use. To improve future editions of the ISO 19650 series, national asset owners, public clients and authorities are recommended to gather information and experiences about its implementation and use. The ISO 19650 series can benefit from a formal process for managing assets, for example as in the ISO 55000 series. The ISO 19650 series can benefit from a formal process for managing assets, for example as in the ISO 55000 series. The ISO 19650 series can benefit from a formal process for managing assets, for example as in the ISO 55000 series. The ISO 19650 series can also benefit from a systematic approach to quality within an organization, for example as in ISO 9001. Although certification to ISO 9001 is not a requirement of the ISO 19650 series, the ISO 19650 series can also benefit from a systematic approach to quality within an organization. For example as in ISO 9001, although certification to ISO 9001 is not a requirement of the ISO 19650 series, the ISO 19650 series can also benefit from a systematic approach to quality within an organization. For example as in ISO 9001, although certification to ISO 9001 is not a requirement of the ISO 19650 series, other standards that relate to information structures and delivery methods are also listed in the bibliography. Other standards that relate to information structures and delivery methods are also listed in the bibliography. Other standards that relate to information structures and delivery methods are also listed in the bibliography.